Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! You gotta let it build. You got a little bit. You can't just play it off the top. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another NXT After Show right here on After Buzz TV. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Kathy Kelly. Joining me, as always, the Hobo. Glad to be here, man. Glad to be here. I missed you. I did too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I missed me. All week. I'd be, I'd be sad to be, uh, if if I missed myself. Do you ever miss yourself? Nah. You ever miss I'm, the toilet I'm always bowl? Right where I, <laughs> I'm always right where I need me, is what I was trying to say. Yeah. You're a good fit with yourself. Thank you. Yeah. Can we just press on? He's, at, he's on Twitter at TrueHobo. I'm on Twitter at SoapboxMark. Uh, using the hashtag ABTVNXT or hashtag NXTeam, uh, we can answer your questions live on air, and I will also be in the chat. You are in chat. I'm in chat right Shout. now. Awesome. And we got a lot of people uh, commenting about our special guest today. Yes. Sitting we next do. to me, the backstage hostess with the mostest, Brittany Fetkin. Hey. Hi, everyone. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks, yes. Guys. Um, thank you for coming all the way from Florida thank again you. for the second show of the evening. I know. One of I, these, I came just for this. Yes. One, one of these jokes will hit, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys watch our Breaking Ground after show, Brittany joined us on that as well. But uh, we're really excited to have your insight on NXT since you lived it for the last two years. The last two years, I was backstage watching all these matches and talking to all these superstars. So I'm excited to hopefully give you guys the insight that you're looking for. Yeah. And this episode episode was really backstage segment heavy. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Try to set up things, I guess. Try to build stories, and that's that's always furthered through the use of, of backstage segments. Yes. And it wasn't it wasn't just interviews. It was packages. We got to get to NXT uh, Takeover London, so we got to start building some of these matches now. And that's what tonight seems to be doing. Yes. Definitely. Um, the first match of the night, Asuka versus Cameron making her return. That was a definite surprise. That was great. Uh, the last Funkadactyl from Northridge, California. Funkadactyl. From Northridge, California. Yay! Like, a uh, hundred yards away. Yeah. That actually sounds like a, like a C horror movie. Like, the, the last Funkadactyl from Northridge, California. That would be a great Something. honest trailer. Yeah. Just do that. I'll do it. Be from sci on the Sci-Fi Channel. Oh, oh, I'll do it. I'll be there. Yeah. Um, but Cameron looking a lot cleaner in this match than I think we've ever seen her before. She, she looked sort of exceptionally, uh, I guess, unrusty, despite mm -hmm. not being on television in the, the longest time. She looked clean out there. Yeah. Not, none of the rust was hitting her. Um, we do know that she's been putting in some extra time with our good friend of the show, Carlo Cannon. Uh, su Carlo, Carlo Superstore Cannon, as I've Superstore. been taking, taking a call him. Uh, and uh, yourself. On occasion. On occasion. You know, but not uh, mostly Carlo. Mostly Carlo. I mean, really, he knows her better than I do. Yeah. So he made the introduction. I... I helped her out in the ring a little bit, try to help her work on some stuff, some stuff that we saw tonight. Yeah, talk about like, some of those moves that we saw tonight. Well, she that split kick. Uh, that's that's a quite a forced maneuver because she's coming down, sliding really into the. That is individual. not easy. Like you have to be super <laughs> flexible. <laughs> I was just gonna say that. Ow! Really painful. My groin hurts. All around from it. every <laughs> angle. Split me right in half, but I wouldn't get up from it. <laughs> she's like Gumby. You see her move. She's got such flexibility and and looseness in those legs. They create such a weapon if you use them just right. So why not? Why not just use them in, in all the right ways? Mm -hmm. yeah. And it, it was definitely kind of sad by myself. Next match, no, totally. Good. Um, this th is also the most offense that I think we've seen um, another wrestler get against Asuka. Yeah. Well, it, it was another case of seeing somebody uh, hit 
all of the right things to piss Asuka the right amount off. Uh, and we saw the, the change in her. An amazing sequence of uh, putting her up for like, a, for like a dragon screw, dropping the leg like, all right, cool, let's go back, let's go back to one, even, nope, slap, nope, catch into an arm bar, and just, the crowd ate it up 100%. And uh, it, it got them so much more into the match than they were already. Yeah. I think Asuka's really a total package because she can move in that ring and she's got tons of character and personality that shows through. I mean, she can kick your ass and make fun of you at the same time. How damaging is that to your ego? Yeah. Seriously. Um, and this is something that we've seen throughout the past few weeks is two women's matches in each show um, and I think that that's a testament to how hard the women are working down at NXT and that's something that you can kind of talk to. Yeah, you know what, um, just before I left, I think that the girls are getting an amazing opportunity right now mm. um, and a lot of people that they're bringing in have huge backgrounds in wrestling and can really, you know, really go and it's and it's not just good for girls wrestling, it's just good wrestling um, all around so I think that's really exciting. Does it help the uh, the the workers down there that don't have a wrestling background, does it help working with the more established wrestlers, those that have years in? You know what? I honestly think that it helps on both ends because if you're established, working with someone that isn't as good definitely makes you have to think differently and think for two people. Um, and then, you know, obviously getting the opportunity to work with someone that's that great and that good, it's just you just try to soak it all in like a sponge and just watch what they do and just try to understand why they do what they do. <laughs> Could have said it earlier. No, that's, 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 that's the right answer. answer. It's Tell almost it like she wrestles. Like right. she does this for a it's living. Like, like she did this, did this <laughs> on once. purpose. What? Only <laughs> once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> um, we get our first backstage interview of the night. Tom Phillips is talking to Carmella. Um, and she says that Cass has a sprained ACL. That's what we've seen the past couple weeks, why we saw him on crutches at a live event. Um, not a fun injury, of course. Sprain's better than a tear. Definitely. Yeah. My mom's had uh, two reconstructive ner uh, surgeries on her ACL, so that would that, be that, not You're out for a while. Yeah. 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 That one's yeah. like a year. Yeah. That's one of the dreaded ones in wrestling. Mm -hmm. it's like yeah. ACL. Any sport. Any sport. Any sport. Yeah. Yeah. Soccer, like a year. So, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, but legs are important. Is what I'm trying are to say. they? You like kind of need in your wrestling? knees in wrestling. It's crazy. I just mean in general. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm more worldly. I'm going beyond wrestling now. Really? Yeah. You're talking as a man on the street. Exactly. Walking legs the street important. You require yes or legs. no? Twitter poll. It's going to happen right now. <laughs> are legs important? <laughs> you need them. <sighs> not everybody needs legs. Need them. <laughs> Let it go, Kathy. We're not going to acknowledge the pun. Nope. We're not giving it to you. Not this okay. week. You're not going to get the leg up on us this week. <laughs> We're going to stay on even footing. <laughs> I could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you all day. Um, Dash and Dawson come out and they uh, say that they're going to put the whole roster on notice. Then kind of go at Carmella. Um, but she says when her boys are back, they are going to be sorry. These guys are just so good at rubbing salt in the wound. They take a guy out, they take two guys out, then they come in to gloat about it. And not only do they <laughs> gloat about it, they take the opportunity to, to talk about two other guys that they have in their, their crosshairs. And they give give Tom Phillips a wheelchair for the Vaude Villains. Here, give this to them. I, I, I just... They're going to need it next week. Bunch of jerks. They got brass ones, man. They are kind of a bunch of jerks, but they are one of my favorite tag teams, and I'll They're tell you so why. Good. They are so gritty. They don't look like, you know, the typical wrestlers. They're small, they're feisty, they're kind of in and out of shape, I don't know <laughs> what's going on, but when they get in the ring, they don't mess around, and they are so entertaining, and just, they're right to it. So well, they, they're one of my favorites They watch. wear that on their sleeve, like the hashtag is no flips, just fists, and mm -hmm. they totally live that. We've interviewed uh, several members of the NXT locker room, and anytime we ask them, who's your favorite person who hasn't really, as a little while ago, who hasn't really shown themselves on TV yet, they're like, Scott Dawson and Dash Wilder. 
Wilder and Ty Dillinger, but but everybody said right. those three people. Yeah. Right. So we're beyond happy to get the see them get their opportunity. Yeah. It's coming across. Yeah. As an interviewer, who were your favorite people to interview on oh. screen? Oh my gosh, I have so many fun fun stories of interviewing people. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved interviewing Tyler Breeze. Him and I, would, <laughs> because right down to the very last moment before I had to speak, he's talking in my ear, just talking crap, and I'm just like <laughs> seriously trying to hold it together and just be like, please stop. You like, we just need to get through this. Yeah, I can't break. <laughs> like, don't break. Uh, Dash and Dawson, one of the last interviews that I did, I think a couple weeks ago, I just wanted to crack up when every time Scott was like, oh, to the untrained eye such as Devin, you know. <laughs> They, I mean, yeah, there were some people that were just so hard to, to work with in the sense that I just couldn't keep a straight face. <laughs> yeah. So JJ and Gable time. seem to be the uh, yeah. funny as well. No, uh, another one of my favorites, Gable, is just incredible. That man can talk, he can move. I mean, I just feel like he big things yeah. are really in store for him. We talked about their uh, tag match last week, but that just like blew up on the internet. Yeah. So many people, even people mm-hmm. that don't watch NXT, were watching that match because of how incredible it was. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just you can't help but be drawn to what's really good. And that was exceptional. Like, that's one of the matches that I would send to people who've kind of fallen off of wrestling. I don't know how you could. Um, it's been great the whole time. So uh, <laughs> it's uh, uh, that's that's one of the many matches from NXT that I would be like, look, not just wrestling, but tag team wrestling. Actual tag team wrestling is coming back. It is on the rise. Those guys. Oh, those guys. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Jordan Gable, I, n- they, I noticed your transition. It was a good transition. They cut a promo <laughs> about how they want to face the Ascension and they are going to ascend to the titles. I see what they did there. But also, we got a fun little tease here because Gable was started to allude to them as the world's greatest tag team, which, as we all know, every single person on Earth knows is uh, Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin. And with the recent string of bringing people back for one-time matches maybe a month or so, I it seems more likely than ever than we can see these guys come back at least for one match. I mean, there were also there was so much news about uh, legend contracts like being handed out left <laughs> and right this week. Like, I feel yeah. like everyone got one. I thought Billy Graham already <laughs> had one, but I guess he didn't. I you can't keep track of who has these things. Maybe they yeah. gave it to the Reverend Billy Graham instead. Yes, that's probably WWE yeah. is like Oprah this week, though. You get a legend's contract. <laughs> you get a legend's contract. <laughs> Congratulations, you didn't make it, but you've already got a legend's contract. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Legend in my own mind. <laughs> um, Bull Dempsey comes out with new music. Yeah, it fits. His, unexpected. It, well, unexpected, but it's it's pretty pretty welcome. The the bull. It was it was kind of wearing thin for this new th- for this new gimmick, uh, and they utilize it in more of a positive sing-along sort of an aspect. So I think it fits a little bit more for him now. Not a yell along. No. Because because both. We would hear it. We will we would hear the not the F word, but the S word uh early on and From I think who? that who everyone it's not a just family You were <laughs> You were there in San Jose, <laughs> damn it. Whoa. Um so uh they're try I think they're they're doing what they can to put him pull him away from what he was to get a full transition to into what he's doing now. Yeah. Um, he faced Angelo Dawkins tonight, who came out with his tag team partner, uh, Dash... Er, Sawyer Fulton. Sawyer Fulton. Happens. Um, I did it the other week. I wanted to talk to you about the transition that a lot of people make in NXT, because when a character isn't necessarily working, even though it might be working in a live event or something like that, not necessarily working on TV. So um, this is something that we've seen with Bull, and I know that he's a good friend of yours. So maybe um, speak to that and how it's just up to you to like. Yeah, you know, adapt. it's really interesting because I mean, when how we first saw Bull, he was a certain way, and then you know, out of nowhere, just with um, you know different people coming in, if it's too similar to what someone else is doing, and they want to push this person, then you might just get the you know, hey, we got to change it up, and then it's kind of on you to really come up with some new things. Um, and I think that Bull really did that and yeah. did that well. And, and that's not easy because for people to see you and the public to see you one way and then to just suddenly just switch it up and be like, oh, now I'm this, mm-hmm. th- it's hard for them to get behind that. So I think that he did a really good job of like really, you know, owning this new character. Well, from a fan's perspective, it seemed like both uh, Bull and Baron Corbin were paralleling each other mm-hmm. with uh, just quick matches going over. Um, and 
Bo was really the one that adapted in that situation. Adapted in that situation. Right, right. And then you kind of throw Kevin Owens, and I feel like that was kind of a similar, you know, oh, look, yeah. different body type. You know right. what I mean? So there was too much um, like that, and and Bo got the direction to go a different way. And I think that you know he did a really good job of kind of taking his look and still owning it, but turning it into something humorous, but also still threatening and and relevant. Yeah, it's a, it's a good story. <laughs> it's not necessarily he who changed, but sort of the circumstances right. around him, which is sort of true to life. Mm-hmm. Now he's just a guy who's bigger and different and has confidence, and now he's he's just going forward and being confident with who he is, and I think a lot of people can relate to that. And it's also reflected in the commentary, because... Even Corey Graves, who will cut anybody down at any given time, <laughs> given the like a rich, calling him out on having a month vacation. <laughs> yeah, what? Like, uh, he so just buries poor rich. <laughs> that, and that's the thing is, he takes so many. You see him go so hard on people, but anytime Bull comes out, it's like, look at how much weight this man is. Lost. So it's not. You don't look at it as a comedic thing. You look at it as something completely serious that Bull is doing to make himself better, and that right. I think helps in the in the long run with Bull. So much so. Yeah. All carb diet. All carbs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just carbs. Close must down be the ni- Olive must Garden. Be nice. <laughs> he did that. He would um, take a what? He closed down the Olive Garden. <sighs> yeah. It's a hard day of training. It is. Is that a carb? Yes. I mean, oh. it depends on the sort of role you use to put it on. Yeah. Um, Bull goes over in this match. Uh, of course, Sawyer Fulton didn't help out at all. He so had the opportunity. We, we've been talking about for weeks the the split of this tag team. Is this the the final breaking point? We yeah. think it's gotta be. They're, they're probably gonna get a backstage segment, like a NXT Fallout thing. Uh, it happens too often, though. They'd rather well, see it happen in the ring than backstage. I agree, but the, with this team, they haven't really been in the forefront. Posit like as much as like Ty and JJ were, so it depends on what they're trying to do with them moving forward. So if if they really want somebody to, if they if I mean it looks like they want Sawyer Fulton to break out as like the head heel here, so he's got to do like he's got to fight Bull and win is is what it sounds like. As much as I don't want that to happen, because then he one ups, uh, yeah, Angela. <laughs> Yes, Dawkins. Yeah, no, we were talking about <laughs> JJ and Ty no, and, their, and their tag team breakup, so I was getting confused. But, yeah, I mean, he, he has to one-up him in some way. Like, he gave the big ass ah, and get of, this at the end of the match. But I sort of see it, but I can also see uh, Dawkins coming in at the end of, say, a match between Bull and uh, and Fulton and actually him the screwing Fulton yeah, work. and putting Bull in the winning position so that both of them have to fight each other. But Bull doesn't necessarily yeah. take a hit because he could use a little bit more of a push. And he can, like, creep out. Just like, hang <laughs> involved with it. <laughs> just, my name's Paul. It's between y'all. <laughs> Terrible. Tom Phillips backstage yet again with the VOD villains. Uh, they call uh, Dash and Dawson sophomoric, sophomoric roughnecks. Can't even say it. Take three, please. Let's sophomoric go back to one. Roughnecks. There you sophomoric go. Roughnecks. Ooh. Sophomoric, sophomoric roughnecks. roughnecks. Sophomoric So one team is calling them rough, and the other one's calling them soft. Soft. So which is it? What are yeah. they? I don't even know anymore. Never understand. But. Uh, they talk about how English. Dash and Dawson left the wheelchair for them and says the villains are the ones who are going to need it next week. Yeah. I think the one thing to take away, or one of the many things to take away from this promo is the Vaudeville, well, Aiden specifically called them their toughest challenge to date. Not even the trying to, going for the tag team championships and the several times that they got screwed out of that from a one Miss Alexa Bliss, but this this right here is their toughest challenge, which helps. They helped each other. Uh, oh, each team helped each other. Like, put them eat, put them on a pedestal. So now, as Ric Flair said, you're only as good as the, the person that you beat. Uh, these teams have both put each other high on the other's radar. So it's like, ah, we'll take care of them and move on. It's now, dude, we gotta fight. We gotta fight. 
It's just, it's different kind of competitors. Dash and Dawson are mm-hmm. full steam ahead, like real, real, like roughneck types. They're going to punch you in the mouth. That's their style. While BAMF, they were, they were sneaky, snaky. They just seemed to evaporate once the villains got their hands on them. So it's a different, different kind of dynamics, a different kind of match. And honestly, I'm very much looking forward to this. Mm-hmm. And uh, it really, I'm hoping, lives up to a, a standard of excellence. Definitely. Um, we see Apollo Cruz in the locker room just warming up his hands for the match. <laughs> yeah. And then he gets up and the title is just hanging there in Valor's locker for anyone to take. That it that it doesn't mean a lot now. Cause <laughs> Finn's like, ah, whatever. I'll just leave in my locker room and I'll go about my business. I've I've not been a champion very often. But I have been a champion. And when I was champion, I'm not leaving the belt lying around. He's, he's not even exaggerating. He like he took it everywhere. Like even with your anniversary with the Hobat, you had it you had it with you. Of course. Yeah. That why was... would I why would I not bring it with me? <laughs> he it's had the it... one thing that everybody wants and they're gonna take it from you. Even people who aren't even wrestlers are gonna go, Hey, it's a nice belt. Why don't I just take this off your hands? I, almost right, took it. I agree. He should be sleeping with it, he should be mm-hmm. showering with it, it should be by his side at all times. I mean just leaving it laying around is just kind of right. like, come on. Just like your girlfriend. It's valuable. If you leave your girlfriend lying around, so we go pick scoop her up. Scoop her right up. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I was going to say it made for a nice shot, but even then, I'm like, ah, the light. The lighting was weird when it came to the title matches tonight. But it was I guess so we'll shiny. I want to go back and see if there was a reflection of the cameraman. <laughs> it was just like yeah. right next to it. Oh, yeah. Um, Tom Phillips backstage interviewing She's getting a Bailey. workout tonight. Yeah, and um, he asks Bailey if she has found partners because she was challenged by Alexa Bliss and Team Banff um, for a six-man tag. The Hype Bros Called it. come to the rescue, and they are already hyped, even though their match isn't for another week. <laughs> well, that, it was another case of Mojo getting so excited. Let's go! It's like, where are you going? You got a week to, to blow the, all this energy off. God, I, I love Mojo. Wait, do you remember? He used to do the promos, and he's like, yeah, I'm gonna go, and he kicks down a door, and then, like, the match would be that like was one of his away. one of his one of his first weeks. It showed him getting ready, kicking down a door, and then walking to the ring. But he didn't have the match that night. He had it the next week. So it's like, what was he? Was he just doing laps all week? Wait, yeah. I'd love to say something here because I'm good friends with Mojo, and I let me tell you, he is like that all <laughs> the time. Cameras on, cameras off. It is. It sometimes it's exhausting. I love him to death, but sometimes it is exhausting. We, but we've I seen him in the Zubaz like all yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. You can't miss him. 100 miles an hour, like all day. All, I'm like, do you sleep? Like, I don't. I don't even know. He's crazy. There's Absolutely crazy. There is actually uh, the the flight back from New York. There is the big picture of everybody, an uh, NXT picture, and everybody looked tired as hell, except for Mojo, who was like ready for round two. <laughs> he probably didn't even sleep that night, probably honestly. Not. He just kept it going. Yeah, it just um, so he's truly, we, truly like that. We have seen <laughs> since. I mean, we're we're not done with the backstage uh, segments yet, but how how long were the were the the I guess the the rounds of interviews. Would you do them all in one go, or would you do them throughout the course? No, of a- so it was actually kind of crazy. Um, you know, we film about four episodes a night, mm-hmm. and um, you know, we film out of order. We don't know, you know, depending on whose match is where. So it was all kind of crazy. So I would literally be doing outfit changes, like I, you know seven times a night because mm-hmm. we'd do one from one episode, then I'd do the third episode, then I'd go back to the first episode. Just depending the second on one. who was available Yeah, at that depending time. on who was available, you know, people are doing their matches and, mm-hmm. you know, so it was crazy. So it's complete organized chaos the whole filming day, but somehow it always works out. That's <laughs> good to hear. Yeah. That's the magic of television. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, the next match we have tonight, Eva Marie v- back from Paris. Versus wow. Marley, who didn't get an introduction, Ooh. but the first time we are seeing her on NXT TV. In her Jersey brand jersey. Her Jersey brand jersey. Yeah. A jersey jersey. That's my joke. Jersey jersey jersey. What do you think of this match? The match overall, even Marie looking a little, uh, little rusty. Coming back from Paris, obviously hadn't uh, had much time in the ring after coming back, thrown right into a match, and... Uh, not necessarily the best. Too many Pano Chocolats and yeah, not enough uh, running the ropes. <laughs> Croissants. I don't know. <laughs> baguettes. Yeah, it's a French little. Yeah. Fr- 
No. <laughs> They're called Freedom Fries, Kathy Kelly. Um, That's but right. The, yeah, this was uh, very good. This match was unfortunate. In, uh, in it, well, I mean, we get a lot of flack for 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 really de- defending Eva, and she does, which we shouldn't be, because everybody's doing their damnedest down there. Um, uh, this this unfortunately looked like a step back for Eva to me. Is 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 why um, there are a couple things here and there that went that weren't uh, as clean as they as they were. Um, maybe it has something to do with the total diva shooting and and not really getting a chance to to focus now that the season's back up in full swing. Um, but I I hope that she she gets uh, back on the horse because uh, what what was her finishing move? I don't know what her finishing move was. Um, was the was the un de trois count for the yes. the win? I think you have to realize that also, yeah, she's out escapading. That's France, the thing; she has and, so much to do. And other girls, you know, in NXT are training every single day. No, so. that's that's the big difference. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, is that that's on just her a disadvantage on, on company because she has essentially three jobs? She's working main roster sometimes. Right. She's on NXT, and then she's also doing Total Divas, and which a lot of people stuff. don't realize right. that it's that is a full time job, mm-hmm. uh, filming a reality show. Right, right. You know, I mean, I mean, she has to. To go where the company wants her to go. Um, exactly. So and she doesn't even live in Orlando anymore. Yeah. She lives in California. So when she wants to train, she was training with Brian Kendrick. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know. I just it's. I want to see her get better. I want to see quality wrestling on television. Be it women, men. I just right. want to see good wrestling. Um, speaking of the last women's match of the night, is there anybody on? on the roster who's not yet on TV as far as ladies go that you think should be? That's not yet on TV. Yeah, that hasn't debuted yet. I'm trying to think. Um, I think Aaliyah might be on there soon. Mm-hmm. She's uh, very, you know, sh- I think beca- she's very different. Yeah. So yeah. I think that will bring a new dynamic to the Divas Vision. I mean, I mm-hmm. think the Aussies need to get more or, you know, I mean, a little bit more of a push because they are good wrestlers. A win once in a while? Yeah, maybe just a win, you know what I mean? Or I, I, I think that they have a lot to offer that we haven't yet seen. So, I mean, yes, they've debuted, but have they really? Because we haven't really... Right. gotten to know who they are and, and yeah. getting those backstage you know pieces so the um, you know the universe can see who you are as a person are really important and that's how you know you get the backing that you kind of need and, and in that regard I think we've gotten a little bit more uh, of Billy Kay than we have of Peyton Royce so far right. and and it's it's been welcome to see oh cool we're starting to see what kind of a character she is and what kind of a person she is right, right, right. it's very helpful are you too personally excited to see more of Marley Will yeah you- I didn't really see much of her today. So in, in um, that case, yes, right. It's, but I want to see. I want. I would rather see some establishment, and then have somebody come in instead of just like, well, here's somebody. They literally didn't say her name once on commentary. We yeah. just knew because we the knew audience the knew. Yeah. The audience was going Marley. I mean, Marley, I don't so even think they that they branded it. her yet because she's still uh, Daddyo on Twitter and like. Right. 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 Um. I mean, I think you can really tell and see a difference, um, you know, how they introduce people. Like, some people come in with vignettes, like Nia Jax. You know, she was teased for a while, Mm -hmm. and so when you come in like that, yeah, you're going to, you know, get... You can see that the company is behind someone like that. It's really hard to come in, like, you know, Marley, Billy Kay, or whatever, and just get thrown in. You don't have an entrance. You don't have a vignette. Nobody knows who you are. For all they know, you know, you're just, you know, working and whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think that... That it's really important, and you can really see like how people evolve based off of how they're introduced. But we've also seen that with uh, other people, like uh, Dawson and Dash. We mm-hmm. we've seen them, and they lost several times, and then they were not repackaged at all. But they started winning more and more, and becoming more of a credible threat over time. Right. So right. maybe we'll see that with the. And that was kind of how Bailey with, was, right? Yeah. She she lost a lot, and then. It's just it like you back. said, with the introduction, you can really see an, an individual's trajectory. And if right. you don't get that introduction, you're not going very high right. very quickly. You're going to be nice and low, and it's not where you want to be. So is is Marley right now more the equivalent to an Elias Sampson, where, you know, at uh, TakeOver Brooklyn, he didn't even have entrance music? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. I mean, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. You need <laughs> yeah. you need something. You need well, you, to I, look I mean, like you're gonna win, possibly. I know, and I and I think it helps. It's helpful for the audience to see like 
this person are they you know mean or gritty or are they really nice you know what I mean they want you want to see kind of something before you're just thrown at you yeah and I've heard she has a lot of personality so mm -hmm. I mean I'm she wasn't wearing wrestling gear and I think that should have been at least explained right. like why are you wearing a jersey in the middle of the ring this is a wrestling ring put on some tights mm -hmm. but the 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 crowd there was really behind her they were chanting her name so clearly she's over at the live events yeah. so there's the problem with the disconnect well we when saw that with there, we saw that with here. Ty Dillinger before he really had his push people were still doing the the 10, 10. so right I think we need to eliminate that disconnect a little bit, even if it's with just a lower thirds. But as printing. as fans, I think that we're so in tune to know, like, okay, the crowd there really likes them. I think I'm gonna like them too. They they dictate so much of what the audience at home sees hmm. and feels. True. Anyways, uh, no, time will tell. Yeah, time will tell. Guess who's back? Back. Tom Phillips. Hey! Wow. Forgot. Uh, man, he's busy. He's really taking over my job. Yeah. Time, <laughs> he's not messing around. He was just right there. Hey, do you have yeah. any, any interviews? <laughs> Uh, Emma and Dana are backstage with Tom, and Tom asks Emma if she is scared of Asuka. Um, Emma says she doesn't appreciate Asuka being in her face and smiling all the time. Um, and Dana says... Uh, when she came and patted her on the head, that was childish. I can attest to that. <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know. see how everybody is looking at me. <laughs> my how did you feel uh, being patted on the head repeatedly? Oh, gosh. Belittled, put down, bullied. I just wish I would have had my chance to just hit her once. Just once, <laughs> you guys. Is that too much to ask? Yeah. Everybody was rooting one. for you at home. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> you know, but uh, hopefully someone can avenge me. So uh, I'll, I'll keep watching and we'll hope that I'm avenged. Do you have Doing anybody in mind to do the avenging? <laughs> I mean, Asuka. Have we're both Asuka. Asian. We're both Japanese. That's I don't true. have anybody behind that. So, yeah. Asuka. Are you really? Yeah. yeah. What, how much? I'm um, half Japanese. Okay. Cool. Yes. So, um, after this, we get the main event of the evening. Well, we did get an, we did get an announcement about NXT London that oh yes it, that uh, Motorhead's Ace of Spades is going to be the theme track, <laughs> which uh, might allude to a possible performance. But they that's what they said also about the the last takeover as well. Is like oh these people we we got them they're they're all good but never saw performance. They are going to be in London. So Un unlike the other band though, Motorhead has performed live. Yeah, could you going WWE. going from a WrestleMania to an NXT takeover? I bet the crowd's hotter at. Uh, it's at, smaller. It's like a club show. Right. Well, like a club show, it's going to be several thousand people. Well, compared to WrestleMania, <laughs> it's like a club show. <laughs> yes. yes. They have the mood lighting for bands. They <laughs> do. They do. Uh, we Should be got like some major major mood lighting tonight uh, to set the stage for the main event. Do we all want to go down and say what our jokes were? <laughs> Mine was NXXXT. Very good. Excellent. How about? I know. You don't remember? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't want to share them. So what I have in mind right now is a no-no for T. Well, I, I tweeted. It reminded me of the, the lighting from the live sex celebration with Edge and Lita like years ago. It was just like, what? What what kind of a match are we having? <laughs> this is a bra and panties match between. Oh, you know what? I would see that. Yeah, that's I'd say Apollo's about a C to a D cup, so it's really got something boobs. to work with. That's a that's a big man. <laughs> um, a big man. Anyways, Apollo Cruz versus Finn Balor. The NXT Championship is on the line, but after what was a very clean start to the match, Corbin comes out and just starts attacking Cruz, then attacking Balor. Samoa Joe comes out, we think it's to the rescue, but turns on Finn. It's sort of uh, created an anticlimactic finish to that match because it was so hot. Mm -hmm. The contest between those two was just ridiculous. I mean, back and forth, back and forth. Maybe Finn had a little bit of an advantage, yeah, very but small. it was it was almost not existent. But two extremely technically good wrestlers in the ring. Um, but to me, I mean, it, a lot of people were confused as to why Cruz was getting pushed so fast into this main event picture and um, why he got the title shot so soon. Well, I mean, you, yeah. they got two matches out of it. 
We're gonna get Baron and, and Apollo and oh, Joe. Oh yeah, and- of course. Now it's it's obvious as to why they did it. But before, I mean, how many tweets did you get about why is Cruz getting pushed so fast? Even I'm asking. I I, I know why Cruz is getting pushed. That's the difference. I'm not asking the question because I know the answer. Um, but it's it's should it be happening? Should Apollo just be winning and winning and winning? He didn't even lose tonight. He yeah, he was lose. the first one attacked, so he won by DQ. No, it was. I'd say it was a, a no contest because Corbin came in as a third man and wiped them both out. But whoever he attacked first, it was a DQ. Yeah, eh, technicalities, technicalities. He still didn't lose. All right. Cruz never loses. I mean, and some I people say he's, he's coasting, or you could say he's on cruise control. Oh, God. I like how you did the soft intro to that one. You know, he's <sighs> cruising. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I just, I, it's hard, it's hard to get behind a guy who does not have to work very hard to get but what he wants. That's the difference, is he makes it look easy. I will make it legal. That's not necessarily a plus. I, well, I'm an old-fashioned kind of guy where the good guy has to work his ass off and never get the belt. That's the kind of story yeah, I like. Yeah, because he that he finally gets it. But, um... I agree. I like kind of like the underdog story, the like build up to something. If you're just so good and you're just yeah. cruising, then there, the where do you go from there? Right. Yeah. You, know? you can't start on a ten and then go past then. Yeah. Unless you're Ty Dillinger. But I that's mean, beside I, yeah. the point. <laughs> so many more people resonated with Sami Zayn's story right. when he came to NXT and he still like it's never really achieved still that. a struggle. Yeah. yeah. Right. So like he won the title, but barely and barely they even lost had. It. It. Yeah. Yeah. And it creates it creates a fire under the guy to who never gets it and eventually it sort of changes him and eventually he's, he turns into this thing this machine mm-hmm. that it's it that's his goal that's what he wants and mm-hmm. apollo cruz emotionally will never get there just because he's like ah, it's too easy the big cheesy smile yeah. and just so, yeah well, the, uh, the, too easy. the crowd was chanting uh was chanting that was or all too easy or that was perfect and and stuff like that that's and, too easy yeah. yeah uh i just i still want to know him I still, uh, even though we've gotten that little bit of a video package about him, I I still don't know that much about him or what type of a character he's he's going to be. Uh, I think you have your answer in your question. Fair enough. There's no knowing. We have. I the, think we have. There are known knowns. There are known unknowns. Right. And unknown knowns and whatever. <laughs> we, I think we've seen the the depth of the character that is Apollo Cruz. Mm-hmm. Which is a problem. You want something that you can never quite understand, so you can sort of keep going back to the well and learning something different. Finn Balor's kind of that because he's he's multifaceted, multi-faced, uh, but Cruz is just Cruz, and he's a great guy to hang out with, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if he's a guy you can necessarily relate to. So does that mean that he is going to have to change things up in order for fans to get on board with him? They're already on board. But also, so essentially, it's me complaining to the stars. <laughs> Are they, though? Because I feel like we've had multiple comments over the past few weeks of people even saying with the video package that we got, the one that was very similar in vain to the story that we saw of Finn Balor, um, it's still not enough. And they're, they're kind of having the same sentiments as you are. Then I think some changes need to be made for fans to truly accept Apollo. Uh probably making him lose a lot more. It's it depends on who they put in his way. Like I, I they're putting him up against Baron who's got a lot of momentum as well. And and he was on such a winning streak up until the tag tournament. So uh, I mean but he has lost a couple times. But I think he's a good person to put Apollo up against for now. I yeah. foresee Apollo attaining a victory pretty quickly. Do you? I do. End of days. How could I not? End of days from nowhere. From, from out of nowhere! I don't even... I don't think that's... I imagine Apollo would, like, flip out of it. I mean, and we'll, prob- we'll, pro- really we'll probably get that. It'll be really impressive. And then he'll... I want him to walk back into another one. <laughs> be so like, now, oh, it's gonna... Huh? He'll just be standing there after he walks like, out of it, like... like <laughs> yeah. So I did it. It. <laughs> Are we witnessing, like, the impossible... Do we want Baron Corbin to actually win something? <laughs> Wow. What? What? I mean, okay. we also have been wanting Samoa Joe to turn on Finn Balor for 
a long weeks time. now. Yeah. That finally happened. Was it everything you hoped for? I'm, I was not the one saying that it happened. It had to happen sooner. I'm just saying something different had to happen. You, in fact, were the person who were just clamoring for I this. Know. You wanted this so He's damn bad. <laughs> <laughs> Joe is a natural oh, heel on TV. Oh, yeah. You're I think he's heart. great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh no, he knows his stuff. Um, I I'm just happy that, or I hope rather that that Apollo gets a a long fl- a long feud, as opposed to just another. Hey, let's have a match. I won. That's it, and moves on because we haven't seen him struggle. Do you know who would have been the perfect foil for Apollo? Whom? Kevin Owens would have been the perfect foil. Yeah. If if Owens just didn't move up what he did, and he would have perfuted with Apollo, and it would have been perfect because Owens would have managed to sneak a victory away from Apollo. Mm-hmm. Apollo would have to climb the mountain to get to where Owens is. You would have had some fantastic bouts because both of those guys are, are amazing despite being large. It would have been amazing, and it's for the main roster, I, mean, I guess. I don't see it happening right now because he is the IC champ, but could... Kevin Owens come down in a capacity like we've seen before Cesaro doing or someone from the main roster just coming down for one or two sets of tapings Not while to he has have the a belt. feud. But for, I, a, for yeah. a one-off, I'd have to say Apollo would win. Yeah, Again! Yeah. 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 I agree. Uh, like it would have to be the first, first taping for the first show where Owens gets the victory and then they have a rematch for the last show. And then that's when Apollo wins. Yeah. I like can't the, particularly see that happening, but no, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Right. That, like no, the, the likelihood, cool. yeah. real low. Yeah. It would be nice. Yeah. One, uh, one of the main cool. main problems is uh, there that the the chat and the comments seem to have is is we we g- constantly get berated that we don't like Apollo Cruz. Is that, I like him a lot. I like him a lot too. I, just, I, I it's, you don't understand. Like we said. I see him doing so much. I think that he is... He's going to be a new face of the company. Yeah. Once he's once he makes he's it so the incredibly talented. I think that we, we see so much more for him. We just want that to come out and to shine on television. And it's just w- breaking through some kind of wall that... Mm-hmm. That's the thing. He's not breaking through any walls, like in a literal sense. I mean, that'll come with time, though. Don't you think? Hope so. Time and good writing. That's because what I'm he's for. he's also one of those people that he was brought into the company and almost immediately he was on television. And everybody's okay with it. Everybody's okay with this push, but there are so many people they complain. You know, you got Eva Marie, you got oh, Roman Reigns up there on the main roster. People complain. They but cry. has Roman Reigns not gotten better? Yeah, he has gotten because they gave him time. They didn't have a problem with exactly. Roman Reigns, but they say. They're shoving this person down our throat. Are they not shoving Apollo Crews down our throat? Is that not happening? Am I imagining that? Am I gagging on air? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're Stop. gagging on Apollo Crews. Okay. Oh, well, okay. You know, I imagine those are small trunks. Let's, uh... <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm giving the devil his due. He's, He's a beautiful man. Chiseled out of, out of black granite. <laughs> Solomon Crank shirt's available at nxpnetspreadshirt.com. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honest. What do you want? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Is there anything this is else every you guys want to mention? Way. This is every this week. <laughs> we warned you before the NXT oh, after yes. show goes a little bit off the, a lot of bit off the rails. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Surprised it took us this long. Um, anything else you guys want to mention from uh, tonight's episode? I don't know. We're just done so early. Yeah. So I many mean, backstage segments. I wanted to get to uh, talking to Brittany about some of her insight. Let's do um, it. All right. Yeah. Um, so we did get a little bit of uh, insight into how long it takes you guys to film, but right. um, we talked about it a lot on the Breaking Ground after show. Wanted to talk about your wrestling experience and everything that you learned down at the Performance Center um, and maybe give us some insight into what some of the other people who are on NXT go through. So, okay, so just wrestling in general? Mm-hmm. Anything? Oh, gosh. Okay, well, we didn't no. get to see you on television at all. I know. And we, we feel deprived. I know. Honestly. And I was like, it, it was such a... We, we really teased the NXT universe with the whole Dana, me, build up, and then it was just kind of ripped away. Yeah. So even myself, I was like, ah, I feel like I need to avenge for Devin Taylor. <laughs> like, this is just so kind of left in the air, you know? And um, that I think that's a regret that I have. I wish that we... We would have been able to do that because 
I think regardless of, you know, I think it just would have been a good match because it would have been so fueled with emotion because, you know, the two of us have had such a long history, you know, and that and that really makes a match when there's history and there's a story behind it compared to when just people are thrown together when you're like, well, I don't really know their relationship or why they have beef. It's just kind of a match. Um, and I think that it really helps to have a story. Yeah. A, long, a big story. Mm-hmm. How often did you get the opportunity to wrestle live events? I only was on live events consistently for a couple months. I, I think I started um, in March of this year, and then up until I got injured, which was July. So, I'm what was happy. your finisher? Um, the Dirty Devin Taylor DDT. Nice. No big deal. Or the Stairway to Devin. I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, I had all these great ideas yeah. in my mind of you know a clever way you know things to call it, but I appreciate never that got the so chance. <laughs> yeah, I knew you would. I knew you would. Yeah. So Stairway Stairway to Devin is so good. Right. Um, right? <laughs> uh, did you did you get to work Dana at all during the, during the live events, did, or was that never? You know what? It was funny because on the live events when I first started, I was a heel. Um, mm-hmm. I was totally a heel. So, and I love that. I love being mean and nasty. It's the best. <laughs> um, and so I tagged with her a couple times okay. and uh, just tagged with a couple people. I didn't really have many um, singles matches. It was a lot of tags. And then um, the direction that I was given was, you know, obviously as a Mexican interviewer, you're up for the show, you're a good person. You have no reason to just be this nasty person. Mm-hmm. So then I was more of a baby face character. And um, and then that's when I guess I worked against her a couple times. And I think in a couple live event matches, she would get me and pat my head. And then finally I'd get her and, you know, get it back a little bit. But... Um, how do you that mentally make that transition from being the good character on TV to a bad person at live events, or was it just that, a disconnect? To me, that is easy. Okay. Um, to being the bad person and make making people hate you is a lot easier than trying <laughs> to get people to like you. It is hard to yeah. be like, you know, hey, cheer for me, care about me. So, you know, it is hard to, to be a baby face and to get pe- people behind you. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, I, I can sort of attest to that. The, the fans treat me well. Yeah. Uh, so I, I never have a reason to be mad at them. <laughs> Especially you got a lot of kids, too. got a lot of so kids. You can't. Yeah. yeah. Sell as much yeah. merchandise as I can. Tell you know, me, I love it. You have kids that are fans. Kid fans, not you have children around no, the world. No, we don't there are have no little hobolets running around. That we know about. I did enjoy on the live events, you get a lot more freedoms to, yeah. to explore and try these different characters. So I would go out to the ring with a big purse and my sunglasses and just play this crazy LA girl character, which I had a lot of fun doing. Um, and Any real life like experience that. just drawing from <laughs> <What>? <laughs> you know girls what? that you know in LA? Yes, you know what? And it's so funny. <laughs> I, I always feel like the best gimmicks are the ones that really do channel part of that person. That's yeah. when you know that, that it's believable and that it's real. Mm. When you see people try things that are so not them, sometimes it works, but a lot of times you can see it seems fake, like they're acting. Whereas, you know, the people that have the gimmicks that you're like, Mojo. wait, this is That's how him. they are, that, <laughs> those are usually the ones that I think people get behind. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, we all have some part of, you know, you have some part of, you know, a mean person or different person in you. Just finding that and channeling it is the challenge, I guess. Yeah. That NXT crowd can be real vocal. Did they make it easier for you to be mean to them? Because they can be, <laughs> they can give it to you. Yes. They really can. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes, <sighs> wrestling fans are ruthless. Truly, they're like up there with uh, teenagers on the internet. (laughs) Yeah, they (laughs) are teenagers teenagers on the internet. internet. That's why they are. They don't. I mean, if you're a wrestler, clearly you have no feelings. So (laughs) people people can say things to you on Twitter, and you don't feel a thing. That's Um, right. (laughs) Bulletproof. um, Yeah, you're just feelingless. Um, No, they are. But you know what? That's part of the fun. When when the crowd is into it in a live show and if they're heckling you and that, you know, that's part of the fun. The best feeling in the world. Yeah. Yeah. The the, the worst is a silent crowd. It's like awkward. So if they're yelling at you or cheering for you, you know what I mean? That's encouraged and that's what makes it fun to play along with them. We touched on this on the Breaking Ground After Show, but for those that just listened to our NXT podcast, can you fill them in on what your plans are uh, now moving forward? Yes, everyone loves this question. <laughs> what are you going to do? Um, well, I said earlier, I have really lived it up the last month. <laughs> Truly lived it up. 
Uh, took a month for myself, went on a road trip by myself, a couple different states, I've been to the beach, visiting family. Um, I've just really kind of decompressed because when you're in wrestling, it truly is a lifestyle. It is not just a career. So I feel like I've really, you know, gotten back to my roots and just really, you know, entered the real world again because there is a world outside of wrestling. Believe it or not, people, there is. <laughs> I don't want to live there. Yeah. <laughs> you don't. You I really don't. don't. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I love entertainment. I love hosting. I love interviewing and talking to people. So definitely going to stay in, in that realm. I'm in LA right now, meeting with a bunch of people, seeing old contacts and yeah. friends, and yeah, just gonna see where it goes. I mean, I definitely won't end up at a nine to five because that just wouldn't suit me Don't after, you know, <laughs> <laughs> being so in another world for the last two years. But yeah, I'm excited. Every end is a new beginning. Um, I love wrestling, and I, I know in some aspect I'll try to stay involved. I I would love to, you know, just go to a gym and just wrestle and roll around. That's something that I don't want to just never do again. Mm -hmm. I can, I can imagine that. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited for everyone to stay tuned and see what I have in store. Yes. If a uh, if a prominent women's wrestling company like Shimmer came a knocking, would you would you open the door? You know, I can't say that I wouldn't. I I don't know that I would dedicate my life right now to. Um, you know, traveling around and doing that, but you know, if there was a show around and they invited me to it, and I don't know, I really can't say no to, to anything. I have no idea. Um, whatever opportunity comes my way, I will definitely consider in, in some way, shape, or form. Honestly. It's like they say in the business: uh, you can expect anything. Anything can happen at any time. And right. and I'm. We're we're all like the the NXT community and and the wrestling community really excited to see where where you go to next. Thank you, yeah. thank you so much, you guys. And you are welcome back at After Buzz. Yeah, anytime. Yeah, I would love to come back. <laughs> <laughs> um, love it. So that brings us to the end of the show. Uh, but if people want to follow you on your journey, where can they find you? They can find me at Brittany Betkin um, on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm also on Pro Wrestling Tees now. Yes. So come check it out. <laughs> Uh, I think you know why I'm here is my new slogan uh, because that's the oh, infamous words from Canyon Seaman on my final days at NXT. So definitely go to ProWrestlingTees.com. We need a Stairway to Devon t-shirt too. We really do. Yeah. Right. right. Devin. <laughs> uh, I can make it work. <laughs> um, Hobo, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter at TrueHobo. ProWrestlingTees.com slash Hobo is uh, where you can buy my shirts if you really want to, but I suggest you buy Britney's instead. <laughs> uh, or you can buy one of our shirts at nxteam.spreadshirt.com. If you want to learn how to wrestle, follow at CWFH Training on Twitter or call 818 381 2563. Watch Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. Where's it? Taping on Sunday. Kathy will be there. I won't. She'll be there instead. I'm sure everybody will be She'd rather much to happier Kathy. that she's there and I'm not because she smells nicer. You're you're much better at, at promos and gimmicks than Brandon. I'll that tell you dude that is much. boring. He's, he's pretty a bag he's of just like milk toast. Just boring. It's terrible. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Soapbox Mark. The Gimmick Pod is our wrestling podcast. We put up a, an, a uh, an episode recently that's very. Very blue, uh, to say the very least. All blue, everything. Um, all blue, well, everything. It was, all yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty blue. But it was just like, F dude, everything. chill. Um, NXTeam.spreadshirt.com is where you can pick up all of our fun gimmicks. Uh, really quickly, Angie Harris, uh, a fan of ours, dressed up her daughter as the Hobet for I Halloween, that. and that was the Thank most you. adorable thing. Thank so you, I wanted Angie. to uh, shout her out. Uh, Halloween was fun. Uh, if you haven't seen our Halloween episode, go back to last week and watch it because we all dressed up. It was pretty fun. Kathy Kelly. You can find me on Twitter at Katherine Kelly and on Instagram at Kathy Kelly. You can follow all of us here on Twitter and Instagram at AfterBuzz TV. Brittany, thank you again for thank joining us. Guys. It was such a pleasure to have you on. And as I said, you're welcome anytime. Thank you. I will take you up on that. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> See you guys next week. Bye. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menounos, <laughs> Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later! later.
expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.